Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at the lovely and attractive Ronnie Bennett as we both sit here getting old together. Uh, it's older and older every time. Y- yeah. Now you have a uh, you have an alter ego, uh, the crabby yes. old crab. What is it? Tell them on crabby your crabby old lady. Crabby old lady, which is on your on your blog, which is timegoesby.net. Whenever I really want to bitch about something, I write in the third person as crabby old lady. It kind of keeps me from getting too nasty. Yeah. Now, you said maybe you're crabby old lady today. Oh, yeah. Not enough sleep last night. (laughs) I'm tired and I'm crabby. (laughs) Now, you don't like to stereotype old people, but isn't that kind of stereotyping old people because they always think that old people are crabby? I'm just talking about me. No, but I'm saying that you always, you make a big deal out of the fact that you don't like to stereotype old people, and yet by being crabby well, old ladies. It's part of my crusade. It's part of my crusade. You see, it would be okay to make jokes about the get off the lawn old man oh. or crabby old lady if we were treated as equals with people of all ages. We are not. Hmm. So I try to find a balance between that ideal that I yeah. would want. Right. We are equal with every other age group in the, in the world. Well, the dream I'm on. Along with, you know, the normal human thing. And sometimes you're really crabby, and I'm crabby today, and I don't like the question. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, as I, I think I said to you once before, as time has gone on, I began to suddenly realize why old people are crabbier. And why they do yell, get off my lawn. Because I found myself in those get off my lawn moments sometimes, <laughs> you know. Like, you know, there are people down on the street at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning yelling and screaming at each other. And I want to, like, pour water on them, you know. Yeah, I would do. Yeah, I yeah. might even do now, it. Now, now would I have done that when I was younger? <laughs> I said, you can't lift the bucket anymore, right? You know, if I was younger, I'd probably- <laughs> street yelling <laughs> is what would happen you see if it's if people are accepted for what they are mm-hmm. it's it, I, I think every kind of group it doesn't matter I mean there are hundreds of kinds of group thousands uh, they all have their idiosyncrasies yeah. if we were all accepted as equals and we're talking mostly about age here but it mm-hmm. can apply to anything yeah. where people are not treated equally um, but if we were then you could make really funny jokes. And one of the things I wish somebody, because I'm not that kind of humor writer, I can't do it, but I think one of the funniest things is all of us forget names. You know, if I were introducing you to someone in person, I would very likely at the last minute, but at the point where I'm supposed to give your a your name, mm-hmm. look at you, the guy I've known since I was 17 or something, and your name would go right out of my head. Now, a man, and it happens to us in conversation all the time. Well, somebody, a good comedy writer, could do a wonderful sketch about two old people trying to have a conversation, and neither of them can remember any of their nouns. If if it weren't a put down to talk about old people's memories, Mm -hmm. then we could have wonderful comedy sketches like that. Yeah, yeah. How come your eyes are running? Oh, because I it's a pollen. It's a pollen. It's, it's allergies. I, I, and if I take the allergy medicine, I'd be like sleeping like this. So, you know, I mean. <laughs> That's it, how I feel today. <laughs> there's, no, there's no winning, you know, with allergies. Uh, uh, you know, I, um, um, but I find myself, I, I find myself getting crabby. I do. I mean, and I think part of it is as you get older. Now, you, you have a legitimate medical condition, okay, that you can be Anything you want to be, and I will put up with it. Okay. <laughs> oh, probably not. <laughs> you know, got cancer like you do. But anyway, I uh, don't think outside of what you cannot physically do. Yeah. What, depending on what is wrong with you, I don't think you should get a pass just because cancer is attached to my name and not someone else's. I don't think I should get a pass for that. Okay, I, I probably agree with you on that, although I may have uh, a prostate cancer, the good kind, the slow kind, but if I get it, I'm thinking of using that as an excuse for not wanting to take out the garbage. 
I'm sorry, dear. <laughs> you can take that up with Marjorie. I'm yeah. sorry, dear. I the, don't want to get in on that. <laughs> uh, the, the cancer's acting up today. You know, I mean, something like that, you know, as an excuse. But um, so you don't feel that people, you don't want people to go out of their way to be extra sensitive towards you in certain ways because you have cancer. Well, there's things, now that I have this breathing problem mm -hmm. that will be addressed in the next month, I can't even get to the garbage or the, or the mailbox without having to stop a couple of times and rest. I just don't have enough breath for that really? anymore. Sometimes, not every time, but sometimes even pushing like when I'm just getting started, the empty basket at the market is hard for me to do and I'm breathing heavily. And the other day I was coming home, I used to be able to carry in six bags of groceries, no big deal, and run up to the front door. I haven't been able to do that in a month or two. And I was coming in from the grocery, I now just have to make many trips back and forth. Uh, and I was walking toward my apartment and a neighbor came by and took some of my bags and helped me in. That was terrific, I really appreciated that. But I don't want any special treatment beyond the really lovely help with things I actually cannot do anymore. I've got some in the kitchen up above the cupboards, some flore long fluorescent lights mm -hmm. throughout. Yeah. And I bought some new ones at the hardware store. And then I thought, you know, I think whenever was the last time I was on a ladder is the, probably should be the last time I ever do that. So nobody's happened to have been here, but the next person who walks in my house is going to put in the fluorescent <laughs> lights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, what? that's one thing I've found as I've gotten older, and this is strange. I have a hard time with ladders. I well, mean, because our balance isn't as good as it used to be. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, for instance, in the old days, I could have jumped up on a table. Okay. Yeah, I don't exactly. think I can jump up on a table anymore. I mean, it's not that I'm, you know, uh, as uh, having certain restrictions like you do now with your health. But it's just because as you get older, the idea of being up on that table kind of un makes me unsettled because of the balance thing. Right. You and know. you don't know. I mean, there have been times just walking down the hall, I suddenly kind of half fell into the So, and by the way, I bought a walking stick. Because when I, when they fix my breathing, hopefully, and I can walk again at some, some length, mm -hmm. I don't need a cane, which is mostly for taking weight off your feet. Yeah. I need a third, a third leg to help me balance, you know? Yeah. So um, I, I'll start using that. Um, but I have a calendar, a wall calendar, just behind this monitor up above me on the wall that when I have to turn the page for the next month, yeah. I can't reach the top little place where you, you know, put the previous month. Mm -hmm. And so I've always just kind of knelt on the desk and done that. Yeah. I've done it the last two months, but I'm a little shaky about it. On the other hand, if you wait till somebody walks in and you remember, if you yeah. to ask them to turn the calendar, well, by then it's the next month after that. So, you know, But you, on the other hand, you're not going to call somebody up and say, would you please come over? I need you to change the month on my calendar. You know, that, <laughs> you know that's asking a bit much. That's like me saying, hey, I don't want to take out the garbage. I've got cancer. You know, so, I mean, yeah, whatever. So, you know, it's it's a balance, I think, to find a way, I wrote about it yesterday, Yeah. to graciously accept help when it's offered, to be able to ask for it, the calendar or the fluorescent lights or mm -hmm. whatever when you need it, but not ever, ever to use cancer or whatever it is that's a matter with you as um, a means to flail people with. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I want to uh, I want to do something a little bit here, uh, show and tell uh, for our audience. Okay. Yeah, uh, and I sent the picture to you originally, so yes. you know what the, what's in the picture because you're not going to be able to see and it. I actually own the picture, but in black and white, not color. Well, no, you don't own the black and white version of that. You own a black and white version of me and John and Yoko. That's the only no, black. I have that exact picture that really? you sent me in black and white. Really? Because I've never had this picture. Let me put it up here so that people can see what I'm talking about. There we go. There's, uh, there's a picture. Now, first of all, those two exceedingly young people in the, <laughs> <laughs> in the bottom of that picture is Ronnie in red and me with the mustache 
and a full head of hair, you might notice. Okay. You might want to mention the year we're talking about. What year was this exactly? Do you remember? It, it was, uh, uh, let's see. What year did we move to New York? We moved to New York in 69, I think. But how could that be? Because I thought that we were at Woodstock. I know we were at Woodstock. Wait a minute. When was 68, wasn't it? Or was it 69? No, I think it was later. Yeah, I think it was later. Um, okay. But it was April that we moved to New York from Chicago. Okay, but I think it was 69, if I remember correctly. I just couldn't remember. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was 69. So okay, this so would happen. This was at WPLJ. Which we so went. We two years at WMCA, so it has to be 19. Maybe 72. Seven, no, because you and I broke up in 71. Okay, this is, uh, you know, this is, this is one of the problems with getting older, you know, is, is this, uh, this, uh, this uh, constant um, trying to figure out dates. Uh, okay. You know, I could be wrong about that. Maybe we broke up in 72 when I was 31 rather than breaking up in 71. I don't know. Let's I say that. Know. It makes the dates work here. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the picture. Uh, I I think it was I think it was like seventy one, seventy two. I it probably seven. It we did it. We did John and Yoko on the morning show, which I first yeah. did when we went to PLJ. Okay, so is that a PLJ or WMCA? What this picture? Yeah. No, no. This picture is WPLJ because the people in the background is the general manager whose name I can't remember. And I've written to the other guy in the picture, the guy with almost like the beetle-like haircut, who's Alan Shaw, who right, was the uh, head of uh, head of the FM stations at ABC. And I don't know who the tall kid is back there. He was one of the either tech, I think he was one of the tech people. I mean, it, nobody that I remember, okay? It's like, how did this guy get into my room with all these other people, you know? The oh, guy, I don't remember him. I just don't remember his name or what he did. The guy in, in the mid, the guy in the middle on a level with us is Pete Bennett, who was Alan Klein's second in command uh, after Alan, and Alan Klein was the manager of the Beatles, and so he squired John and Yoko around, and you know, maybe you out should for them. say why that picture was taken. Because why was it taken? Do you know? It was because we had. We'd, I'd been, I'd, it took a long time, but finally booked John and Yoko on the show. Mm -hmm. And it was whenever somebody of that stature came on the show, mm -hmm. somebody at the station always wanted to photograph, so we would do that. Oh, okay. So uh, this was after we had done the live interview with them that day. And that was in a conference room, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it wasn't taken in a studio. And uh, then, uh, of course, as I say, down at the bottom of the picture on the left-hand side in red is, that's Ronnie. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's way before she had to wear a turban. Uh, By the way, I'm going, I'm going to try growing my hair. Are you? This happens. I don't know if any, you know, I already had bald spots before I lost it to chemo. Yeah. But it's growing now, so... You know, I'll keep wearing hats of different kinds until it's long enough to see what it looks like. It's right now. It looks like somebody needs, uh, you know, a, a haircut. Guys who wear their hair, you know, it just every. It's kind of patchy. What? It, it's kind of patchy, or is it coming back in? I don't know yet. I can't tell because no. it hasn't grown in that much, and so I'm going to let it grow though and see how patchy it is. Good word. I like that. And. Um, and we'll see. You know, maybe I'll let it grow. No, the, tur again, the turban looks good, though. You look like a grand dame in New York society. <laughs> okay, I'll take that yeah. for fun. Anyway, getting back to the picture, uh, let's see here. And then, of course, that's me with a mustache and, and lots of hair, which I don't uh, have anymore. Uh, and I don't know where I left it, but it, uh, somewhere back then. You know, the thing is, is that you're a good deal older than your dad when he died. But he had a beautiful head of hair as an old man. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But he was receding. So yes, uh, you but had that a, doesn't make yeah. still had lots and lots of Where hair. I got the baldness from was from my per, my maternal grandfather, who was born cue ball. Okay. That well that's who you get it from. You don't get it from your father. 
You don't get it from you. I don't you. think anybody knows that for sure, Alex. Well, no, you, no. They they say that genetically baldness is inherited from the maternal grandfather. Yeah. As long as you want to believe that. Well, I mean, I, I can't explain this, okay? Well, you can't explain. I mean, genetics is a very. If I had my father's science. hair, I would still probably have quite a bit up here. So you know. But I mean, I don't think you can make blanket statements about where they come from so much. I asked a strange question once, and you're gonna you're gonna blanch at this. Who do you inherit okay. your? Are you asking me this who, well, question? Uh, who, is do, who do you inherit your penis from? <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. Anyway, uh, just a little question. Back to the picture. It's it's the. You always go there. How do you do I, that? I've managed to do it because I think lower than sometimes Donald Trump even thinks. So, you know. <laughs> but back, and then the two on the right-hand side, I don't recognize. Who are those two people? Let's see here. I think his I name was John and her name was Yoko. Oh, 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 those two you're talking about. Yes, yes. I'm talking about those two. Yes. Uh, and uh, this, I never had this picture in black and white. I have a black and white well, picture. I'll track it down and send it to you. I have a picture of me with John and Yoko, and uh, we're all sitting at a table together. And that's the, that's the one that I have had up until now. And then my ex-producer uh, met up with some people at PLJ, and they sent him letters, and they sent this. And I have never seen this photograph before. So. Oh, well, I, I've got two or three from that session. I'll track them down and send them oh, off Oh, good. You. Then I can collect the whole set, you know. Yes. <laughs> if it weren't for people like Albert sending me this and other people sending me other stuff, I mean, there are people sending me audio from WPLJ that they used to record at home while they, and collect the I've shows. I've seen it online, recordings from the old shows. Yeah, yeah. So, um, um, in fact, I had to stop one the other day. Somebody was uh, had, had actually put up the John and Yoko interview, which I protect. I really I go after anybody who, does, who wants to use it. I don't mind them using it if they ask. But if they don't ask, then I mind them using it. Yeah. Who owns the copyright? Nobody owns the copyright, but I could sue for the use of my likeness of my voice. Okay. Uh, the, I don't think that's true about the copyright. I think somebody owns it. No, uh, no. And if 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 there was one, they could see if no one else. Well, if uh, they could claim it, and you can you can claim copyright, but it was only for maybe thirteen years, and then the copyright would have run out, and nobody renewed it. Why is it so short? Books go for seventy-five or eighty. Because years. times have changed. Back then, it was like I think it was thirteen years, and then renewable for another thirteen, and then it went into what was called public domain. Okay, but in any event, I what happened? I'll tell you what happened with the with the interview with John and Yoko a few years back, not few, many now. A major um, uh, auction house in London was auctioning off a reel of John and Yoko's interview, uh, and they were saying it was going to get three hundred thousand dollars because it was a rare, never before heard interview and I went and checked what the interview was and it was the one I did with John and Yoko so I have a copy of it I've always had a copy of it anytime I've gone to another station I've upped the uh, when it was on reel to reel so then I upped it to like a, a, a CD and then I upped it to a, to an audio file you know I've, I've kept it in pretty pristine condition and I got a hold of the auction house in London and I said, to begin with, the tape you've got is a seven-inch reel. Right now, I'm looking at a ten and a half-inch reel. You know, the bigger reels. I said, those. That's the master. That's a copy that was probably given to John and Yoko. That we would make a copy and send it to people. Uh, and I said, uh, you don't have any rights over it, and the one you're selling is not the master. And then I said, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this interview and I'm going to put it up on the Internet in a form that everybody can download it. I said, so I think you ought to stop at the auction. Two days later, there's a news item. Uh, auction House decides to withdraw John and Yoko tapes. 
And I, what I did is I took the I took the w the money factor out of it. You can go online, and I have posted the John and Yoko interview. You know, you can listen to it anytime you want to. Uh, and I've done it because I didn't want anybody to ever be able to make money off of it. So I've devalued it. So. Was it a good interview? I don't remember. Oh, it was a terrific interview. Don't you remember? In the middle of it, he threw up. Oh, that's not what makes it wonderful. Well, what happened was in the, middle, in the middle of the interview, we're sitting there, right? And a guy walks he in. He's going through something, some rough time with his... Ex-wife No, or no, this or was, this was, um, this had to do with, yeah, this had to do with the Beatles, uh, Eastman suing Klein, suing John, it's suing the other Beatles. Everybody looking at this, I like. Yeah. But, well, anyway, the point was, this guy walks in, and I said, who are you? And he said, oh, John Lennon? He said, yeah. He says, oh, I'm a big fan. You're terrific. By the way, you've been served. And he served him right there in the studio while we were on the air. That's one of the things. I, think I said, that, I think that. The <laughs> yeah. And uh, John then said, I have to go to the bathroom. I have to throw up. And he left the room to go throw up. He actually was so nauseated by this event. Wonderful conversation, Alan. Well, I mean, it's a little bit of Beatle history that people might like to know. You know. But okay. anyway, so. <laughs> Don't you remember that? Yes. Oh, okay. I never thought right. to tell the story, though. I mean,. I don't know. Well, I very seldom tell the story, so there are some people now who have heard the story about how John Lennon almost threw up, threw up in my studio. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, it's better than the time that Morris the Cat scratched me. Did they bring him to the studio? Did <laughs> yes, he speak? they brought him to the studio, and they put him on the on the uh, the console. I get confused about the famous cats. Morris is what? What did Morris he was the ever finicky do? cat? I don't like blah 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 blah. Oh, oh, oh okay. uh -huh. What kind of food did he promote? Uh, I'm trying to remember which brand. Friskies, maybe something like that. Anyway, uh, uh -huh. uh, I do remember this about Morris the cat that I I made the cover of New York Magazine in their yearly uh, salary issue. And it posted my salary, and right below me was Morris the cat and his salary. Yeah. Luckily, I made a little bit more than Morris the cat, but you know. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, more I some Morris the cats in my studio in San Francisco, and and I pet him right, just like I because I love kitties, right? I know how to pet kitties, and he scratches me. Yeah, well, mine always turned out. He let me pet him for. A minute and a half and then bit my hand. Yeah, well, in any event, the people who were his handlers were now worried I was going to sue. <laughs> Scratch. <laughs> but as it, what, what it was, I went around uh, for like a week with this scratch on my hand showing it to people. Oh, my God. I said, see that? Morris the cat. And I used to refer to him as that horrible, terrible cat, you know, so. But then he okay. died because he only had. half a century ago, Alex. Huh? That well, was about half a century. Was that ago. a half? Well, that was San Francisco. So was that half a century? Yeah, it was. It, no, I don't. A know. quarter of a century. Quarter. Of I a don't century. know when you were in San Francisco. Yeah. So anyway, so that that was my big deal with Morris the cat. Wow. You know. So anyway, so looking one last time at this picture, we uh, I look at it and I just go, "Wow, has time passed?" You know. Look at those two kids trying to do a radio show. You know. <laughs> Sort of like doing a ham radio thing in our bedroom or something. Yeah, yeah. Let's put on a show. Hey, I think I can get John and Yoko. <laughs> you know, everybody's always impressed. I'll tell you when they sh they had a, a PLJ goodbye party because the station's been sold. Okay, uh, and uh, they don't know whether they're going to do away with the call letters PLJ or what a WPLJ. But uh, I went to it. I stayed for about five minutes because it was so noisy I couldn't stand it. Old person. See what right? happens when See? you get old? Yeah. <laughs> but the only picture they showed of me on this screen was uh, of me with John and Yoko, that black and white that I have. Mm -hmm. And my uh, old producer, Albert, noticed I wasn't there, so he sent me. said, See, they did a tribute to you. And I wrote back, They would have never shown that picture if I was only in it and John and Yoko weren't. <laughs> you know? You know, it's just astonishing how you can always find something wrong in anything. That's right. 
That's my job. <laughs> it's my job in life for crying out loud. Do you know what? 25 minutes have just flown by. There you go. See? Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't think it was wasted. I think we had a good time. We talked about old times and pictures and people could I'll see it. I'll down those black and whites. It'll take me a few days to oh, find when, when you can. If they're, if they're not up on a, on a shelf somewhere, then you got to have somebody come over and get them down for you. <laughs> well, I do have that problem these days. <laughs> I wanna, if, they should make old people's furniture that everything is low, nothing tall. <laughs> so we don't have to think well, they about should just ladders. come down lower and lower and lower, you know. But, <laughs> right. uh, anyway. Oh, and then you have to lift the bottom part because you can't bend over anymore. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ronnie Bennett. Uh, she has a blog called timegoesby.net. You should read it. It's really, really good. I'm telling you, even if you're oh, young, thanks. it's yeah. it's fun. What? Thanks. It's really good. I enjoy it. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you.